Good day. In this short video, we're going to explain how to remote from one computer to another computer using your Microsoft account. So let's explain the scenario here. Uh, basically, we have a friend of ours who uh, runs a small company and she has a laptop that she leaves in one part of her house, in her basement specifically, and she wants to work in her pretty office on the second floor which has two screens and a nice view. The very first thing you need to do is go to each of the machines. And by the way, you've probably already done this part. So this is a part you can just pay attention to, but you've probably already got it. Go to each machine and sign in using a Microsoft account. A Microsoft account is just an email address and a password that you use with Outlook.com, Hotmail, Skype, Xbox, OneDrive, Office, that kind of stuff. Most people already sign into their PCs using a Microsoft account because Windows 10 and Windows 11 really, really want you to do that. And if you don't do it, they will nag you until you do do it. So you probably have already done this. Now, the actual email address that you use for that could be yahoo.com or gmail.com or outlook.com. Could be, could be any of those. It doesn't have to be a Microsoft email address as in outlook.com. So what you need to do is sign into each of those machines using that account. So we'll assume you've already done that. What you need to do to get the remote desktop to work is pretty straightforward. You need to go to the machine that you want to remote to, the far away machine, which in this case is this machine right here. Uh, this is a machine that I have in my basement. And what you need to do is enable remote desktop. So you click start and type in remote and just keep uh, typing until you see remote desktop settings. Okay, so I'm gonna click on remote desktop settings and make sure that enable remote desktop is on. Now we're gonna check a couple of other settings here, but there's probably nothing for you to do after you've turned this on. The rest of these settings are probably already set correctly. So the first thing is to make sure that your account is set up for remote access and it will be if you are the administrator on that machine and you're the one that turned on enable remote desktop, which, is, which you probably just are. So as I said, there's probably nothing to do here. What you can do is click select users that can remotely access this PC. And you'll see in my case, my calgarytechyahoo.com address already has access. So I'm good to go. And the last thing you wanna do here is make sure that these are turned on, these checkboxes. It's difficult to remote to a machine when it's uh, gone to sleep or when it's powered down you're going to want to make sure that, that this machine stays on. And when I say on, it doesn't mean that the screen is on. The screen is really the only thing on your computer that's going to use a, a, any notable amount of power. The CPU, the memory, the motherboard, the rest of that uses extremely little when it's idle. So you don't have to worry about wasting power. Enough said there, make sure these things are on. Make sure that this discoverable setting is on and make sure that the uh, key PC awake is turned on. Okay, enough of that, let's close that. All right, so the last thing you need to know for this uh, remote uh, connection to work is what is the name of this machine or what is the IP address of this machine? Basically, it's address. So if you're technical, you can run ipconfig to find out what the address is, or you can just right click on the start button as we're showing here and go up to system. And that will tell you the name of the device. So in my case, the machine I want to connect to is in my theater. Clever name, huh? Theater 4. Now, by the way, if you didn't like the name of that machine, because if you've left it as the factory default, it's probably some long string of numbers. You might want to click rename the PC and then reboot and then connect to that instead. I'm going to, I'm going to connect to theater four. So let's do that. So I'll close this. Now I'm going to go from the machine in my basement that I want to connect to. I'm going to go to the machine that I'm going to connect from the pretty machine with two screens, not just one. Okay, so now I'm at the machine I want to connect from, and pretty straightforward. Now, this is a Windows 11 machine. Don't get freaked out about it. Um, just it looks a little different, but it's roughly the same. And uh, just click start and type the word remote. And this time, instead of selecting uh, settings, what we're looking for is remote desktop connection. So just start typing. And the more you type, the more will come up and the more accurate it will get. So I want to choose remote desktop connection. Now, Click on that. And because I have already connected to this machine, it already has my information saved. Yours won't have that. So I'm just gonna type in theater four, right? And the key here is after I click connect, I have to somehow connect with my Microsoft account. And it's 
the format you can see is down here because I've already done it in the past. You literally type in the words and uh, this is important to get exactly the way it is here. Microsoft account slash the full email address that you use for your Microsoft account. In my case, calgarytech at yahoo.com is my demo account that I'm used for all of these types of demonstrations. So Microsoft account slash your email address and then type in your Microsoft password. And you can click remember me if you like, I would. Click OK. And this error, this screen comes up and it's talking about security. And it's talking about how there's a certificate for this uh, machine that is not from a trusted uh, security, uh, sorry, a trusted authority. Just ignore that. What that's saying is that the remote machine has not paid for a certificate, uh, which you don't care about. You don't need a certificate and you trust this machine. You know, it's, you know what that machine is. You know, it's yours. You don't need a third party to validate it. So I would click on don't show this again and just click yes. And boom, it comes up. Now I'm remoted to it. And I can work on this machine. You can see this is a Windows 10 machine and I remoted from a Windows 11 machine. So there are three more things to consider before we finish off. First is printers. You wanna print in the office that you're in. Second is copying and pasting data between the two machines. And the last is multiple screens. In my big beautiful office, I have two screens and I wanna use those. Let's deal with that right now. I'm going to leave this open because I want to prove a point to you, which is when you leave a session running, it stays running when you disconnect because there's a difference between disconnecting and logging off. So I'm going to leave the screen like this. I'll leave the C drive up and I'll go into Windows. Okay, so it's just some stuff here. So say I'm partway through uh, doc. Actually, I'll, I'll even do that. I'll go to Notepad and I'll bring up a this is the start of a doc, blah, 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 right? Okay, so I've got these three things open now. Uh, what I want to do is go to the top here and I'm going to press the X and disconnect and it comes up and it says, uh, you know, your computer's going to continue to run while you're logged off. It's just going to disconnect it. Yep. That's fine. Click. Okay. And boom, I'm back to the machine I had, I, that I'm working at the physical machine I'm at in my upstairs office. So I click start, I go to remote desktop. And this time, instead of just clicking connect and you can see it's room remembered my credentials. What I can do is I can click show options and then on the display tab, I can select use all my monitors for remote session. And if I have even four monitors at my remote session, so my big, beautiful office upstairs, I will be able to use all four of those, even though the machine I'm connecting to only has one you know, little laptop I have in the basement. One of the big improvements that's happened recently is that you now can use screens that are of different sizes. So for instance, the screen you're looking at right now, this screen is a standard 1080p screen, the same bonnet, same screen that almost everybody has. But my second screen, as you can see here, when I go into my display properties is a whopping 4k screen and you can see how much bigger it is. And previously you just couldn't connect uh, using remote desktop with multiple monitors, but now it's no problem at all. You can use all the monitors you've got regardless of their size. And I'm going to, I can go back and I can click these, these other things too, if you, if you want, but you, you don't have to, the defaults are fine. I'm just going to click connect at this point. Because I have entered my credentials in the past, it remembers my username, which is just great because that's an awful lot of stuff to type. So I'll just type in my password. And if I click this, don't show me uh, this error message again, boom, I'm up. And while you can't see it, trust me, I am now looking at both screens uh, working just fine. And I could drag things uh, to the other screen. Again, you can't see this, but just take my word for it. And it, this also proves the point that the uh, documents I had left up and the, the way I had left the machine working downstairs, still operational. Uh, nothing got closed, nothing was terminated. We mentioned printing, so let's take a look at that on the remote machine, on the machine that's far away. If I print something, I actually wanted to print near me. So let's show you how that automatically is fixed. If I click the start button on the remote machine, I type in print printers and scan. There it is. Printers and scanners comes up and you can see here that there are these things that say redirected. What that is, is your printer. So I have a Samsung C469 FW and I can a print to it right now. If I were to bring up Word or Excel and actually let's just do it. Let's go to notepad just to make this fast. So 
put a notepad, and there's my document, like, like file print. You'll see I get the printer dialog box, and it automatically goes to the default printer that I have on the on the, the machine that I'm working from, which in my case, again, is a Samsung, you know, 469, uh, which is great. So when I click print, it doesn't print downstairs, it prints next to me, so that's great. And the last thing we wanna show you is how to copy paste between the remote machine and your machine. Now, in the top right-hand corner, we'll have a link that shows you how to use OneDrive to sync between multiple machines at the same time. But if you're not using that, boy, copy paste just works great. Let's show it to you. And uh, I'll just create something very fast. I'll just call it, uh, this is a test doc. And I'm gonna save this on the desktop. Uh, and say I don't have the syncing with OneDrive or anything sophisticated like that. I can just save files on the desktop and I can copy and paste them. So there's the file I just created called test.txt. You can see there it is, I'll open it. I can right click on this file and copy it. And then I can go up to my remote desktop uh, control and I can pull it down, drag it away. And I can right click on my desktop. Actually, let's, let's put it in an actual folder or I'll put it into my documents folder here. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to paste. And yes, that's what paste looks like in Windows 11. So let's go into test and you'll see it opens up and life is happy. So I can copy paste uh, between the machines. I can print from the remote machine to my the printer that's close to me. I can use multiple screens on a machine that doesn't have multiple screens. And for that matter, the screen that I'm working on, the one you're looking at right now, is actually a touch screen. So I'm gonna use my finger. Right now, I'm just gonna drag this stuff around with my finger. And that means that my remote computer, which is maximize right there, even though it is not a touch screen, I can use the touch screen on this computer to move things around. So I'm doing this with my finger. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like. It helps a lot with Google algorithm. If this is the kind of thing you like, click subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. Also, you can leave any questions or comments in the uh, comment section below, or you can always get a hold of us at URTech.ca. The company's up and running technologies, but that's just way too hard to write. So we shortened it to URTech. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.